welcome, welcome. Love seeing this attendees list grow. Uh, we're going to get started. Um, before we have this discussion, this much needed, much important discussion, um, we do want to uh, quickly talk a little bit about the group that's bringing this to you, who we are, what we do while we're here. Uh, my name is Tigra Shoe Jenkins. I am co-founder of Making Us Matter. Uh, she, her pronouns, and I am on unseated Ohlone land. And, and my name is Igoso Bizemo Hamilton, um, she series, um, and I am also in Oakland, Ohlone land. All right. Um, so a little bit about who we are, uh, Making Us Matter. We are an education nonprofit. Uh, we got started back in April 2020. Originally, um, we uh, began as interim schooling during uh, COVID shutdowns. We knew that the students who would be in the families and communities that would be most affected by school shutdowns were uh, black, brown, and poor. Uh, we knew there had to be some kind of interim schooling for the children who were missing out on things, whose schools didn't get to distance learning as quickly. So we started that way. Um, we've since grown into uh, a multi-program offering. Um, we mainly focus on high school students, uh, but we're a collective of all black educators um, providing courses on topics that usually don't get much time to shine in school. Um, as our work grows, we are um, focusing a lot on the black teacher experience. Both Egosa and I are um, high school English teachers. Uh, we've been teaching for about 15 years now. Um, and we know all the struggles um, that just come with navigating cultural climates in schools as black teachers, um, the push for curriculum um, that's representative, um, and, and just want to create a space where uh, we can learn in the ways that are organic to us and are things that are specific to our um, survival and thrival um, in a way that's unfettered. So that's what Making Us Matter is in a nutshell uh, and, and what we aim to provide in our, our communal offering. Um, so we know that with that comes people uh, with this whole pandemic that, you know, I know it feels like we are no longer in it. Um, Nation would like you to think, but we are still very much in it. Things are moving. Um, very quickly, and a lot of questions are popping up because of that, and um, mainly around education. What does that look like now? How do we move forward since so many um, inequities that we knew were there before but are super exposed now? Um, so this conversation is grounded in that. Um, it's not just for teachers, uh, educators, school leaders. Um, it is a communal effort in how we tend... I uh, choose to educate um, in, in, in the nuances of what's needed based on the communities that we live in. Um, so that's what we're bringing, and, and we're hoping that this conversation um, definitely sparks some action in our communities uh, going forward. So thank you, and uh, so glad you're here. And I'm going to turn it over to Raina. Hey, y'all. It's so great to see you. Um, and to see the names, so many names coming through, I, I believe I've got, got everyone with my welcomes. Um, I welcome you with great love. Uh, my name is Reina Leon. I, my pronouns are she, her. I'm coming to you from Latina Lape Ancestral Lands, now in New York, but usually I'm coming to you from Philadelphia. Although I was based in the Bay in Ohlone um, Lands for a long time. Um, but I travel. And so that is actually how I know Alexis, um, uh, sister, Dr. Alexis Pauline Gums and how I know Tango and Martin, um, from these movements, um, in North Carolina, as well as in the Bay. And so I have the honor of introducing them both. I'm so excited about that. Um, and then asking some questions. So to give you a heads up as to what you can expect, I'm going to introduce them, tell some stories, um, so you can feel the love that is in my heart and share in it. <laughs> um, and then um, uh, Tango's going to go first. He's going to talk for a little bit, give us a little taste of, of his thoughts, 
And then um, Sister Dr. Alexis is going to go uh, next, give us a little taste of her thoughts, and they will be in conversation. I'll ask some questions, but I invite you all to also drop into the chat some questions that you have for them, some that you have come with, and perhaps some that emerge for really um, pushing us to think differently about what the future will be. So Egosa and Gertrude making us matter are reminding us that you are invited to live tweet too. <laughs> there are some fantastic um, uh, hashtags that you can use, hashtag making us matter, hashtag black to the future, and hashtag reimagine with mom. And you can of course um, uh, tag uh, making us matter on all the on the, all the socials, they're there. So let me tell you about Sister Dr. Alexis Pauline Gums and um, our San Francisco Port Laureate, Tongo Eason Martin. Uh, let's start with, with Tongo um, here first. So let's see, I got my notes over here, okay. So I scoured the interwebs and I found some things and this is what they say about Tongo. Born and raised in San Francisco, Tango is the founder of Black Freighter Press. He is a movement worker, educator, and poet who is organized around issues of human rights and self-determination for oppressed people throughout the United States. His curriculum on extrajudicial killing of Black people titled We Charge Genocide Again has been used as a teaching and organizing tool throughout the country. His poems has been published in Harper's Magazine, New York Times Magazine, his 2017 book, Heaven is All Goodbyes, um, from City Lights, received the 2018 California Book Award for Poetry, a 2018 American Book Award, and was shortlisted for the Griffin Prize. The judge for the Griffin Prize at the time said this, that his book, Heaven is All Goodbyes, moves between trenchant political critique and dreamlike association, demonstrating how in the right hands, one mode might energize the other, keeping alternative orders of meaning alive in the face of radical injustice. His voice is a chorus for other voices, many arising from prisons and landscapes of engineered poverty. His poems are places where discourses and vernaculars collide and recombine to new configurations capable of expressing outrage and sorrow and love. Now, Tango has described himself and his work as an absolute product of every nook and cranny of San Francisco. And that is deep, those roots are deep. Adding that as deep into the various communities of the city, as our poets have already brought the craft, I want to push even further into places where poetry has not yet permeated. I wanna tell you again about that, that curriculum of we charge genocide again, how that permeates the world for change. Um, I offer you this story. Tango is a man who walks at great heights, <laughs> both literally and figuratively, right? Um, and has such great generosity. Um, he's also one of these folks who, um, I swear, the first two years that I New Tango, it might be, I, I heard five words other than the poems that he said, and one of them was groovy, said many times. It was five words, but like three of them were groovy repeated. <laughs> um, and then I remember this one time, he's at my house and we had a gig uh, where he was gonna be playing guitar and also reading some of his poems. And he talked for, I wanna say half an hour on manifestos and anarchism and philosophy. And I was like, what? Who is this sage that is in my house right now? <laughs> and this was after playing the guitar so well, so invitationally that people who were riding, these kids who were riding on bikes past my house, they stopped and they leaned their ears to listen. And I was, and I went out, I saw them from my window and I was like, yes, there was music and magic happening here at this house. Um, and I think that that is, is 
key for me telling you about Tango walking in the world that there is music and magic happening wherever he walks. Um, and he can see to the truth of the matter uh, and galvanizes to change, galvanizes to change. So Tango will, will offer some words in just a moment, but I wanna tell you about Sister Dr. Alexia Cullen Gum. Um, so here are the words that the interwebs offer us that she is a queer black troublemaker and black feminist love evangelist. Isn't that a great way to be a start a bio? Don't you wanna be a, a, a troublemaker, a love evangelist? If you don't if you identify as queer, don't you wanna celebrate that <laughs> at the front of your of your bio? Yes, you do. And an aspirational cousin to all sentient beings. Her work in this lifetime is to facilitate infinite, unstoppable ancestral love in practice. Her poetic work in response to the needs of her cherished communities has held space for multitudes in mourning and in movement, literally in movement. Her work has inspired the creation of dance, right? And, and the theater production. Her co-editor volume, Revolutionary Mothering, Love on the Front Lines, has shifted the conversation on mothering, parenting, and queer transformation. She is the author of Spill, Scenes of Black Feminist Fugitivity, M Archive, After the End of the World, and Dub Finding Ceremony, among many others. Unlike most academic texts, her work has inspired artists across form to create dance works, installation work, paintings, processionals, divination practices, operas, quilts, and more. What an inspiration for us all in creative practice. She is the founder of Brilliance Remastered, an online network and series of retreats and online intensives, serving community accountable to intellectuals and artists in the legacies of Audre Lorde's profound statement. And the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house that the preceding statement is, only threatening to those who still think of the master's house as their only source of support. I want to tell you about how, or highlight how she works in collaboration with others too, how she co-founded Ubuntu, a woman of color survivor-led coalition to end gendered violence, how she is a member of the first visioning council of Kindred Southern Healing Justice Network and a participant and Southerners on New Ground, Allied Media Project, Black Women's Feet, um, Blueprint, and that her work with her primary collaborator, Shango Dare, has shown the world a queer Black feminist love ethic and practice. Over the last 11 years, they've done work with the Mobile Homecoming um, Project and have created together the Black Feminist F Film School. So, thinking about what the future holds, I hope that it holds collaboration. I hope that it has celebration of love and practice. So there, this is a story. So the first time I met, um, actually, I, I, will, I will, yeah, I'll tell the story. The first time I met Sister Doctor Alexis Pauline Gums, I believe it was in her home. This was in North Carolina. She may not remember. She was whole, um, inviting people to do deep study in the work of Audre Lorde. And so I show up and I'm in this collective of black women who are studying and conversing. And I'm like, what is this transformative, loving, delightful, grounded, celebratory, joyful world that is here that I have stepped into because that was certainly not my experience outside that door. <laughs> I was in my doc program, yo, survival. Um, but that space was a space of, of levitation. And then a few months later, I, I can't remember the time, who knows what time is anyway, any now, anyway now. But in past that time, past that first meeting, which was so transformative, um, I remember walking in a wooded place um, with her and doing a recitation with other folks who had been gathering of of that work so that it lived within our bodies and lived within the space. And so that we were reminded of our own liberatory practice that it was deep in our bodies and in connection with the world. And I tell you, she won't know this, but I, I got real sick afterwards. My, my, my skin boiled up, but that was 
that was a, a lack of freedom boiling itself out, I think. I think. I'm going to call that what, what that was, that physical re uh, response um, where my body said, oh, free, free, we're going, we're going to let go of all these toxins. And that facilitation came through um, her influence, her leadership. Um, so I am so excited for us, so excited for us to listen to Tango and Alexis and um, see those questions coming in um, as an invitation or a, rem a note in the chat while they're in conversation, I will drop a whole bunch of um, links for you to reference down the line. So I advise you if you can to save the chat <laughs> because there are gonna be some really good things in there. All right, Tango, you got, you got the stage or the, the screen rather. Tell us, tell us. I don't. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, you know, for those uh, kind, kind words I hope to one day be worthy of and, uh, you know, for and to uh, make this matter uh, for, for, you know, the, 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 the long struggle um, and, the, and the beautiful work that you all are engaged in. Uh, and thank you for everybody that, who, who, uh, who's attending. Uh, I'm going, I'm just going to stutter a little bit more and get out <laughs> and get out the way. Um, it, it, my, 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 um, uh, kind of uh, it, with an anxiety or, or, or my anxiety to kind of match matches the, the task of, of this time. Um, you know, we, we find ourselves for sure, um, you know, in a, in a time of epochal uh, shift, where this uh, this this empire <laughs> this empire is coming to a close, uh, uh, one way or, or the other. I think it's just a question now of uh, will we, um, you know, will we provide the next reality? Will we determine the next reality, or will it go to more uh, uh, ruling class hands that th this biosphere? Um, can't uh, survive. Um, if if I if I picked up or, or anything along the way uh, uh, in the field of, of of education, which is really just the life's blood of any revolutionary praxis, it's just the understanding that everything um, is is either the practice of slavery or the practice of liberation. Uh, and, and once you come to terms um, with, with that fact, then everything, uh, uh, programmically especially, um, needs to be reorganized. Um, and, and so, you know, when we look at the, the potentials of education, I mean, there, had, there hasn't been all of, all, of the, all of the great revolutions in history, uh, the groundwork was was all was always was always cultural and even more specifically was uh you know with with projects um of of education because no matter you know no no matter where you know no, no matter what the uh no matter what material conditions um the the times offer you it's only consciousness or people who have prepared their their, their, their consciousness um, that can you know um, you know basically bend these conditions to a to a true to a true transformation. Um, I spent a lot of time teaching in in uh, in, in jails um, and other you know basically warehouses uh, for. For a surplus population, they 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 they, they, they haven't, you know, they they, they just haven't uh, 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 ramped up the, the the genocide yet. But we could be, you know, as you see with uh, with how genocidal that you know the, what these COVID times has 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 revealed. Their their care for our life is, uh, you know, <laughs> is, is 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 a few seconds at a time. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but, but, you know, so, so, so what, what's interesting though, I'm, I'm sure, you know, 
I mean, you could you could kind of argue that this is all you know a, a, a prison society puts it, it has everybody um, in, in in prison. But I think uh, what what's extra instructive, um, you know, if, again, if any small thing I, I I picked up is is understanding, um, you know, the the power of education and the power of of, of consciousness. Uh, to rescue a psyche, um, to heal a psyche from this uh, uh, oppressor that we really internalize, the, the, the oppressor in your head that would have you relate to the world in the same way that the oppressor relates to the world or have you relate to yourself and to others in a way that's actually conducive um, to your domination. And so when we look at the tasks right now uh, of what is, you know, what are the, what is the necessary steps to, uh, you know, revolutionary organizing. It's this reanimation um, or, or, or humanization of, of, of our, you know, humanness that begins with the power to define uh, the world and to, and to define ourselves. Um, and that's you know that's what all of the that's what all of the, 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 the that's that's what a hundred thousand great hundred million great people have known. Um, and, and so let me just be the you know the hundred hundred million person to to to, to second that idea. Um, and, and so I, I I think that you know organizing our efforts around this commitment to consciousness. Um, is is a way forward and what, and what we can flesh out some more. But I'll I'll stop I'll I'll stop talking. Hopefully I've you know, proven myself just a little qualified uh, to 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 speak. But I'm honored to be with you all. Convenient. <laughs> Ashe, yes, 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 yes. So I think it's my turn. I just wanna say, I am so grateful to be here. I'm so grateful that Making Us Matter exists. I am so honored to be, to be a part of this. And I'm realizing that and Raina helped me to realize this, that this, this is actually something that I've been, I've been praying for, for, for years, for our communities to be able to come together in this way that is specifically intergenerational, that is committed to the transformative work that can happen as education, freed from the ways that we have been, as Tongo was saying, um, caged and convinced to participate in our own domination. And so I actually, let's call this an epigraph. I was, because Raina was emailing and was like, you know, you, you've you been writing about this you know, for years. And I was like, okay. So there's this one short piece that, um, that I really, listening to Igosa and Gertrude talk about their organizing that they've been doing with teachers and parents and students made me think of this particular thing. It's, it's from a book I wrote called M Archive, which um, after the end of the world, which I thought was about a future apocalypse, turns out it's about the current apocalypse, but you'll, you'll hear it. So this is how it goes. It was like that the last day we left the schools. All song, so many songs of the erstwhile school children freed and the generations crescendoing to meet us. There was a time when no one would have ever thought there could be school abolition, except the sneaky privatization schemes that sought to destroy the students while keeping the buildings as monuments to how deep their theft could go. It was the mothers who said it first, how total prison was, how the problem was not only their children being pushed out of school and into camps, 
but how the children drinking private school Kool-Aid were pipelined to more colorful camps, matriculating with programmed responses like drones to kill the willing once they were made. And the midlife crisis set who protested all the barbed wire put on their years as if learning was temporary and what did they know? Ultimately, it was the natural consequence of all our industrious work to make the air unbreathable, the water undrinkable, and the people uncritically unthinkable. At some point, we needed all the different ages to solve all the problems we had Excel sheeted and databased into our lives. So we abolished schools and prisons the same day and the people came home singing and welcomed with song. What a noise, what a noise for every age. So yeah, I'm like, you know what? I think that that's the prayer that I'm, that I'm gaining faith in because of the work of making us matter. And I'm so inspired by this organization, by, I feel like there's a kindred organization here in North Carolina, Village of Wisdom. I hope some Village of Wisdom folks were able to make it today because we really do, as Grace Lee Boggs teaches us, need every age in order to create something beyond what we've been boxed into. And so, yeah, I, I know Tongo and I will both have a lot to say about education, definitely resonating with the violence that is called education routinely every day in our society. And um, the fact that we're experiencing, the fact that we're experiencing um, a relationship to education that is literally disregarding the health explicitly of our children is um, is actually it's, it's completely unacceptable and it is completely in alignment with um, what education is right now at this point what tango called epochal shift um, crashing of empire and uh, explicit practice of of re-enslavement. So I, I'm, I'm in full agreement with all of that. And I just want to say I'm grateful to be here also with you, Tongo, because I my educational experience was that of, of a tokenized Black girl in a predominantly white school in Georgia. And I came to I came to Perspective Students Weekend at Columbia University, which is where I ended up going to college at Barnard College. And I don't know if you remember this tango, but wisely, whoever planned that week, and you might've been one of the organizers of it, decided to have tango do, do this poem as part of our supposed understanding of, of what, what people of color's experience was at this school. Now, I wouldn't say it was it was <laughs> representative, but I will say that to me, it looked like you, Tongo, just opened up your entire spirit and allowed this ancestral provocation to flow through you. And I remember feeling like, oh, wow, I survived this white high school just so I could finally get to this, you know? And it, it really set a standard for like, how self-expressed I insisted on being and how, how I knew in my being that it was our, that it was a cultural question around whether we would allow ourselves to be free. I don't think I ever specifically told you that, but I'm telling you today that um, really you being who you are and bringing the transformative gift that you bring to the world was, a huge message for me. And I'm still trying to be accountable to that message. And I'm really excited that we get to be in collaboration in this way, in this moment, as also co-survivors of the same educational space for, for part of our education. And it was not, uh, it was the opposite of a space built on love for black people. It was a space built on slavery, quite literally. So, so yeah, and we're here and we're free. 
and we matter and we get to collaborate with these geniuses who just love our community with such a depth that they would create this space and then all the folks who would show up on Saturday like this is your priority I just I love that it it, it makes my heart expand and I'm just really grateful to be here and excited for the rest of our conversation and everything that you want to ask us Raina. I, I loved also witnessing Tango receiving um, <laughs> her work too, um, and how honored I could also read on him, um, the, uh, his body and response. I, an, an initial question, and I also want to just create space for you all to ask questions and rip off of one another because this should be the conversation. We are here to learn and to delight in and that ancestral provocation that comes through us all, right? <laughs> Being a relationship um, here in this moment. Um, so in preparation for viewing the future, and I really appreciate Alexis, how you just um, ended with talking from um, M archive of abolishing the school and the prison on the same day and the return of the people coming back singing. And I appreciate that, especially in connection with Tongo's work, um, working in detention centers and jails and juvenile detention centers um, and um, recognizing truly from a lived experience as well as an educator, um, the impact of abolition, the, the, the promise of it. Um, and, and hearing both of you also speak to the consciousness raising of this time and the falling of empire um, I would love to hear you all talk um, a little bit more about um, the real cost of the fall of empire on um, in connection with our children, in connection with um, loss and grief, because I think we have to name that too, that as this time is a point of, of tumult, we have to um, name that there is grieving and that the cost is, is in our lives too and in change. What do you have to explore around that? And that's open for both of you. <laughs> okay, I, I could I can say yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what came to mind when you when you said that was was Grace Lee Boggs. I mean she just continually comes to mind because because I she is somebody who has shaped and transformed how I think about education, her identification that we need to become solutionaries and her understanding that education shouldn't be this, um, you know, this boxing of the children basically, but it should be an intergenerational process of figuring out how to have the water, how to have the food, how to reclaim our, the resources that our community needs to become alive. I'm thinking about her. And so folks who aren't familiar with, with Grace Lee Boggs, who also went to the same school, actually, um, who was a, a graduate of Barnard College. I don't know if it's a coincidence or if it's just some kind of a very indirect, small piece of reparations is happening. I don't know. But there, there's, I guess that's a theme. But Grace Lee Boggs um, really asked the question, and she, of course, was in collaboration with James Boggs, um, the great, the great revolutionary person who who shifted the possible understanding of labor for for generations. And and they were in love. That love ethic, I think, is really important. But she said we have to ask ourselves why, as the economy shifted, and the majority of the people's jobs in the United States, and they lived in Detroit in particular, were no longer inside of factories. Why was education set up in such a way that it was really just still training a person to sit in, a, in one place and basically learn to be part of a factory machine all day long? And she, she said, what is the, I mean, she didn't necessarily use the word torture. She didn't necessarily use the word cruelty. But she talked about how we have to admit what we're doing when now we're just forcing the children to shut themselves off with 
no, no even possible conceivable benefit to them. There's not even another box for them to go into after they learn how to be in a box, right? And I remember hearing her talk about that and realizing, I mean, it was, it was a mind shift. You know, I thought school was where you, you go sit there and you gotta be quiet and you gotta listen and you gotta, you're gonna have a test. And you know, like the, these are the things that are gonna happen. Um, it didn't occur to me that that's not how it always was. It really invited me to understand that education has taken place in infinite forms across the entire time that our species and other species have existed. And in most cases, in its most effective forms, it's taken place intergenerationally. It's taken place in circle. It's taken place in, um, in a way where we could continue to transform each other over our entire lifetimes, but, with, but especially with, um, with access to and with reverence for our elders. And, and so it just shifted my understanding of what education could be, right? And now we're in, we're in this um, moment where the boxes where you would send the child are literally, literally might just kill them just for them being there in the box together. Like that, that's a, that's a deadly situation in this moment. And it does come back to Tango's question about like, so are we going to, are we going to provide the alternative to that? And th that's what Making Us Matter took on, right? In, in April, 2020, or if we don't, what, what does it mean? What does it mean to, what, what is the sacrifice and the, and the cost of that? So yeah, thank you for, for that question. It definitely made me think about the forever relevance of, of Grace Lee Box. Yeah, I, I, I'll just add, you know, that, that so, so we, you know, when you look at, um, you know, what, what is, what, what, what have these boxes done to consciousness or to, to, you know, basically reduce human beings to inanimate objects. Um, and why it's so it's it, and, and and therefore why education is the, the the kind of like the first site of our uh efforts for self-determination just to get you know what, what one thing that kind of that 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 is that has tripped me out um uh, talk, talking with kids lately is uh you know their deconstruction of like what is actually the what are the avatars who are the avatars of their humanity who, 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 what's the language of their humanity and how much, how much power that is that I would look to something outside of my culture, look to something outside of my bloodline in order to explain the world instead of, um, instead of synthesizing my, my, my view uh, uh, from the, the understanding and from that, 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 that grounding that everything about this universe can be defined by my household, right? And so that's 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 why the, you know again. I, and I, I guess we're just gonna, you know, um, we're just gonna keep on, uh, you know, just just bringing it, bringing it back to you know making us matter and other beautiful people of, of of praxis. This is the only task because until you know uh, 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 until we learn to define. Um, uh, to define reality um, on our terms, or define and define reality centering our humanity, um, we're just going to be, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just going to be more fodder. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just make more cogs, and this is not just uh, uh, this, and this goes through all strata of uh, of society. You know, this this is not just a, a surplus population. You know, this is this is. Petty, you know, petty bourgeois, you know, top to top, top to bottom. Um, what this system has grown adept at doing is absorbing um, even its dissenters, right? Or even absor absorbing the best of its of its of its dissenters. Um, so, you know, really, the, the, the only question is how, uh, how, how like, uh, you, we, the gloves got to come off. How fast do you all want to take these gloves off? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, 
because you know with, without a um, without a living process or organize or, or an organizing process a healing process that is this 24 7 taking responsibility for the 24 7 of our, our reality um you know our efforts will just be real will, will just be reabsorbed and we'll go down with the we'll, we'll go down with the um with the, with the titanic uh, and I'm using multiple things <laughs> to hear very um, closely. Um, I think about um, what you just said, Tango, about um, the system growing adept at absorbing its own dissenters. And I, we're all on the social, so we, we see a number of things. Um, one person I, I study is, is the work of Christine, uh, Christine Springer, who is an artist, an educator, um, and um, movement worker as well, among all the many things that um, she does. And on the socials, just this morning, she was talking about how um, youth should go to their schools and it, the ones that are, are um, are saying, oh, masking, we can't, we can't um, enforce masking in the, in the school. And at the same time, they should wear every bikini, the, the, the little, the thin strap um, tank tops and, and the tube um, top shirts and all the things, and then tell, um, respond to these people who say, we can't enforce a, a mask mandate, but you can enforce a dress code. You could, like, this is dress code, this is dress code. And, and there's something valid, uh, there's a, a valid logic in that. And at the same time, there's the enforcing of a dress code, like the, the way to call attention to the importance of, of protecting one's life through the mask is by calling attention to a code that monitors the bodies of um, young people. And so this is this um, connection even, or at least I made to um, what you just said, Tango, around the absorbing of dissenters, the, the absorbing of pushing back around the policing of the body um, and the hyper watching of the body as a way of, um, of, of connecting to the mass. Um, I'm curious about um, how, we, how we can inspire teachers and educators and folks in these school spaces um, to dissent and not be absorbed. Um, to a descent in this uh, towards a reimagination and and Alexis, you were talking about how intergen like generationally um, in the past we've had different educational structures, education in, in circle, education that is in full acknowledgement of the full age range in our communities. How do we descent to the point that we can return to that kind of wisdom? I offer. Well, I would say, I mean, just to once again, shout out me <laughs> making us matter for, for ex being an incredible example of pra praxis. We practice, you know, I, I think that that's, um, you know, I don't always, or at least I try to challenge myself not to think about things in a, in a in a binary, but there is a dialectic. And you know, sometimes we need to like say where that line is. And so what Tango said about what either we're practicing enslavement, we're practicing liberation. You know, like those are the things we could practice. And so which one is it, you know, in, in this particular moment? I think that it it's a question of practice. So we it's not that we don't have access to a circle you know, like we could make a circle, you know, like we, we know what a circle is. Zoom doesn't believe in a circle, so we hear in the boxes, but we understand what circle means even beyond the physicality of, of a circle. And we, these, these ways, these ways really a biodiverse set of forms of how people all over the world have practiced education and learned what they needed to learn to be the community they were is not something that only exists in the past. It's just that there is a dominant version of education 
Tango talked about these um, outsourced avatars of what it is to be human that are that are hiding it from us, right? So if I'm all day trying to navigate, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with this administration in this school <laughs> that, that, I, that I'm working at? Or how do I deal with the way that the school is excluding my child as a parent? Or how do I deal with how this school is killing my spirit as a student? That's all time that otherwise would be just learning from the people around me. And we do know how to do that. And it's still happening anyway. It's happening all the time. That is why such a huge apparatus of, um, a huge apparatus of violence selling itself as normalcy, selling itself as access is required because otherwise, People, what would people learn? We would learn, we would learn that we're priceless. We would look at the people around us and, and learn that they're all geniuses. We would learn different things from all the people around us. And who knows what we would do with that, right? That there, there's a there's um an infinitude to it, and there's an unpredictable sacredness to it, in in my view, that is it it can't, that's that's what wouldn't be able to be absorbed by a system that absolutely needs to shut down and absorb and silence and distract all of what about us makes makes it makes it a miracle that we're alive all the things about life that make it so profoundly challenging and inspiring to encounter each other so I think that what I see making us matter doing, I mean, with this event, but also with actually creating a community of practice is saying, let's just remember what we already know how to do. What if we spent as much time doing that as we had alternately spent dealing with the isolation of trying to navigate the other thing, thinking that we have to navigate it by ourselves, you know? So I, I'm just, again, underlying, underlining that. And I, but I wanna, but I do wanna say something about, about time. Like we, we are in an ethical shift. There, there is, um, there are histories that are, that are being suppressed, definitely in the curriculum, the <laughs> curriculums that I've survived and, and the, that are happening and, um, just, you know, as Tongo's curriculum says, we charge genocide again, it, it, it's, it's recursive, it's repeating itself, it has to repeat itself. That repetition is forced by the fact that our, our love, brilliance, magic has never disappeared. Even with all of this, it has never disappeared, you know? And it's, it's really, I think it's impossible when we really look at and understand all, all the, I mean, I have this book that's called After the End of the World, just because the end of the world keeps happening. You know, that like after the Middle Passage, after, <laughs> I mean, after COVID, you know, like all of this, I know we in COVID, but you know, after all of this, we're still even here having this conversation. We still love each other enough that we just, this is just what we want to do. We honor and value each other enough that people who are, I mean, you know, the founders of making us matter, it's not like they was like bored. It had nothing to do and <laughs> didn't have to think about surviving capitalism and a pandemic and their own personal lives and their work lives and, and institutions. It's, it's love, a love that somehow none of that was able to kill. And that's really the only thing that I want to learn. Like I just, I just, for me, education is how do I keep learning that? There's another example of that. 
there's another opportunity for me to realize that. And yeah, so so I guess what I what I want to emphasize is that it's not that those modes of education went anywhere. It's not that we ever ever stopped um, having that impulse, but we have been trained to act otherwise. We have been trained to to act as if we consent to the extraction of of everything beautiful about us. You know, Lucille Clifton be knowing <laughs> as you as you know. Um, it's it's important for me to to celebrate the fact that it's here, it's right here, and in every decision, going back to this binary that Tango was talking about earlier, in every decision there is a possibility to practice liberation. It's possible to practice liberation. Now, does, does liberation have, have the same size marketing team as enslavement in this society? No, it does not, <laughs> you know? But that's why I'm trying to be on the, on the, you know, spreading the word, and this is what we do as cultural workers about this possibility of practicing liberation. And, and I think it's good to notice when we're in a moment of it, and I think we're in a moment of it this very moment in this conversation. That's all that really needs to be said about that. <laughs> or, 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 if I may, if I may be the, the 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 bearer the bearer of grumpy news as well i i, I do I, I i i would i i would humbly push us towards uh if i may put it to be poetic exodus right of putting together systems outside of uh, of the system because you know it, it, ultimately um the, the 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 truth is the moment you punch in you are absorbed the moment you punch in you are maintaining this institution and this institution is performing a function uh beyond uh or despite whatever your uh, your your personal belief is the 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 heroism of it though is that the teacher who punches in is you know revolutionary squared or cubed really there in the trenches of, uh, of of society really with the people where somebody could you know we 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 can have our revolutionary organization somewhere in the cut and if we don't talk to anybody all day long what's really <laughs> what's really happening if we only talking to to each other right so it's not to say that the, the teacher hasn't made the the right decision Right or 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 is not the most important person, um, but once once you punch in, you have been absorbed, and that's why to kind of like you know to to accelerate this thing, either we take over these buildings, or we or 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 we or we leave them, but as long as the deliverables along as the you know the 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 objectives and the outputs and all of this are still determined by a, a, a system that 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 um, that facilitates a bourgeois uh, agenda ultimately it doesn't matter how much magic you make in that hour or two you have a kid the the institution takes it, 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 the, the institution the institution is still going to get it gets get it's, you know what I mean? And, and so, um, and, and so building, you know, it, it, and even better, um, you know, to create revolutionary organizations of education whose objective is this building of a politicized people. The objective is to build a revolutionary, which is just to build a human being. Or just to build a person who is who 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 finds uh, their dehumanization and the dehumanization of others um, uh, 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 untenable. 
So uh, I, I would I would I, I would push us out. I, I would I would push us out, and that's kind of what pushed me out because that's how I I, I came to you know political organizing um, after you know years and years and years as the case manager, program coordinator, alternative school teacher, jail teacher, you know what I mean? Just seeing how much of a stranglehold the system has on the other 22 hours of the day for, 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 for these kids. Actually, what broke me, and I, and I apologize for running, for, for running on too long, but I got broke in the Oakland Juvenile Hall. I got broke in the Oakland Juvenile Hall. There's this, this, or it's the Alameda Juvenile Hall. Um, and they, they had a new, they put together a new jail in which the, um, the, 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 the kids were really put back in these broom closets. And they only came out these broom closets, there was no windows. So they could only see the desk or they can only be seen, right? Uh, by, 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 the, uh, by the police. And they, they come out, they, they only come out for programming like school or, 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 some, or some kind of wreck. And then if it, if it wasn't some kind of programming, they were back in this broom closet. And so understanding that education is, a, um, you know, is just an expression of love, I had to ask myself, well, how much, can I, how much love can I have for you? Or, or what can I do about this love I have for you if I literally let them put you back in a broom closet? You see, and no, now this is a this is an extreme. This is kind of an extreme aesthetic case. I think this is the same equation, right? Students getting put, well, and me as well, <laughs> getting returned to my broom closet, right? Um, this is what's happening to that. This is what's happening to all of us, and so it pushed it 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 it, it, it pushed me to say, okay, well. What do we have to build that actually that actually honors the true relationship to the system, which is which is of, of contradiction. What's good for us is never good for them. What's good for them is never good for us, regardless of whatever little crumbs might trickle or might might trickle around, you know. So so well then I, I have to our praxis has to be, you know, has has to has to line up with that. Other, other, otherwise, you know, again, we're just we're, we're we're actually helping the system survive because they know, they know what they're doing. They know it's a, they know this is very upsetting <laughs> what, what they're doing, right? And so they always and, and and part of especially the American bourgeoisie part of their brilliance is to feign a kind of like a, a, a reformability which the system absolutely does not have. So actually, you know, in conclusion, really what my mother would, you know what I mean, always want, to, always want me to point people's attention to is the need to build outside of the system in order to defeat it. Yeah, that's, I, I just agree with that so much. And that's, that's the piece. You know, when Audre Lorde was talking about the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house, she was talking at a conference at the university where she worked. You know, like she she wasn't she was I mean, she was using the metaphor of slavery, but she was saying slavery is not a metaphor. She was talking about the institution that she was navigating in the moment that she uttered those words, and that's why that became the title of the essay. And that's something people quote who never read the essay, and you know, all, all sorts of things. But the next thing that she says is that is only a threat to those who understand the master's house as their only source of support. And so the agreeing with what Tango was just saying, I'm just thinking about this in relationship to, you know, teachers who love the students they work with, right? Or people like me, like my first, my first, where I was a 14 year old doing writing workshops in Lorenzo Ben Youth Detention Center outside of Atlanta um where it was like they're gonna they're going back into the broom closet and i'm going to this place so i have a scholarship and i'm around these white children you know like that this was what we where we diverge and um how can we refuse that separation like to un to understand that 
that separation. So the reproduction of the institution, I guess for the teachers, the teachers who are here, it's we do have to leave. We do have to have an exodus. And whether or not that that's literally like you not working in the classroom anymore, I think it starts with the understanding that what gives you access to your accountability to another generation, which is what I am suspecting has people really become teachers and commit to and deal with all kinds of stuff in, in order to be able to have what Tango said, those two hours of magic or one hour of magic with these with these incredible students who you who you love and who challenge you and, and who you're learning from and who you feel accountable to is to understand that it's not the school, the institution of the school that gives you access to that connection. You may be accessing it through that, but it's not the existence of the school is not what is required in order for you to be able to have that relationship. The relationship is what is primary. The relationship is what existed before will exist afterwards, completely exceeds the institution, which is what's threatening about it to the institution, right? And which is why you only get this one hour, which is why now you got to go into your separate spaces. And I feel like that's one of the major lessons that Audre Lorde taught me, which has led to my decision to, for example, not reproduce the university and instead to constantly be building these alternative educational spaces that, um, that, that always are operating in a circle, you know, <laughs> like, like that, that's um, as, as spaces of, of practice, it had to do with me saying, okay, yes, I do think that part of my role in my community is to do this intellectual work is to be telling the people about Audre Lorde and Grace Lee Boggs and, and, and the geniuses of, of our, our ancestral geniuses. But I don't need this, this th there's a lie that educational institutions say, well, this is the only place that work can happen. For that work to happen, this, this institution has to be perpetuated and reproduced into, per into perpetuity. And it doesn't. I think that that's what Audre Lorde is saying. So it feels threatening to say the master's tools will never destroy the master's house because people will be like, but that, 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 that mean I can't do any good work in, a, in an imperfect system. That's not what it means. But, but the types of decisions that you'll make when you understand that that institution is not your only access, that's, that's what I'm interested in, you know, because I think that a, a teacher who is worried about being able to fulfill what they might see as, as their ancestral assignment to play this role in the lives of young people, I think that's the type of teachers who probably in this conversation right now is not to say that that isn't sacred is not to say that sometimes you're making complicated decisions in order to show up for who you're called to show up for, but it's to say that that calling, that relationship, that intergenerational possibility is older than and exceeds that institution where you may be practicing it right now. And so the way that you'll relate to that institution the decisions that you'll make during that one hour, when you know what you're accountable to can be a possibility of freedom. I mean, that, that, that's a problem for the school because then you're gonna be acting in ways that mean you don't care if they fire you because you know you're still gonna have your sacred ancestral purpose, whatever they do. That's not, what, that's not how they want you to act. They want you to act in a, in a, a scarce and fearful way that ultimately reproduces what already exists. Um, but I, th I think that's important because I think that most people who are educators in this moment are also survivors of educational forms and may not be able, it took a long time for me to be able to see that what my calling was and the intellectual aspects of it and the cultural aspects of it 
even though I may have first gotten access to, to reading and to learning certain things in school buildings, that that sacred connection didn't belong to the school itself. It, it wasn't, the school really shouldn't even take credit for it. What school is doing is trying to contain it and telling a particular lie about it and, and making sure it happens in a way that's separate enough that, that what we, the 14 year olds in the writing club who, who went to private school and the 14 year olds who were locked in Lorenzo Ben Youth Detention Center could not actually create the reality that we would inspire each other to create. And yeah, so and and I I still I I feel in this moment accountable to that moment, but I I want to I want to say that because it is, it is true what the institution is. I've said it before. It doesn't love you. It doesn't know how to love you. It was not made to love you. I say this about the university all the time. The university does not love me, but the universe does. And I think that that there's something. There's just, there's something older than any institution, even though some of these institutions is old, <laughs> you know, there's something older than any institution that's flowing through you and who you are as an educator. And they didn't make it up. You're not stealing it back from them. It's just, it's so, it's deeper than that. It's older than that. It moves beyond that. You're more powerful than the story that the institution is trying to tell us about ourselves so that we don't express that power. I, that was evangelist moment. I was like, oh, I'm evangelizing. <laughs> I felt you it. Were. I was like, <laughs> can you I get a witness? <laughs> <laughs> can I get a witness? <laughs> Chat that had been witnessing. We got some witnesses uh, in the chat. Yes. <laughs> um, I will follow up to one question. There's one question that I believe you just um, responded to very deeply, um, Alexis, and one question from Ali, which is, uh, which liberatory practices enrich you all in your work? which I think will be a really great inspiration for those who have come and thinking about like, how can they also be informed by what they've learned from you? I'm, I'm gonna tag you, Tom, I'm gonna tag you. I, I, I know one might be playing playing um, some music, but, but maybe that's just my assertion of what you do for your liberation. So <laughs> tell us what you do. <laughs> uh, man, you know, it, I, I think, uh, well, one one thing that's 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 been helpful uh, for me is to you know uh, almost to you know to 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 live in respect uh, to to live in respect to a few bigger pictures and to give each bigger picture its due. So we have you know we have a political reality. We have a ruling class. We have a bourgeoisie, right? Who have been running amok and will continue to run amok until they are uh, deposed. And in order to pull that off, you know, there's there 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 are there, there's plenty of um, pre plenty of ground, both you know, history, theory, um, you know, and our imaginations and our specific realities that how they how they play out. And, and I do I do best by, you know, that kind of historical task to, you know, like, you know, but, but read it. Some Amakar Cabral won't hurt you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, you know, go ahead and pick up that Marx, it's okay, you know what I mean? It won't, it won't bite, you know what I mean? And so, you know, and, and even, which is, a, a, you know, a need that I, I, I highly recommend, you know, reading groups, political education, like just study groups, just get some, get some texts, read them together, discuss them. I mean, you know, you, you can really, you can really just politically educate each other. Uh, you don't have to add much more than water. Um, and then 
taking this, you know, taking this political theory and putting it into praxis, you know, saying, okay, well, what is, you know, what, 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 you know, what, what's the move then? Um, and, 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 and making that a, you know, a, a kind of a dialogical uh, a process of, you know, theory, practice, theory, practice. Also, uh, you know, we, I, I, you know, uh, of course, there's a there's there's also a kind of a human's journey, just in relating to reality, um, that also intertwines with oppression and how we're how we're uh, how we're you you know because this is just normalized violence, like uh, Alexis keeps um, keeps pointing out. Um, the baseline of your psyche is very much dealing with overwhelming situations, and we and we uh, our 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 comfort it's, it's almost like our comfort zones are really just in response to the tidal waves of violence or extensions of violence that just crashes around us um, all day long. So I found one thing that's very helpful. Um, in remaining a human being is in practices like meditation, right? To just give you a couple more seconds. <laughs> you might not get to the finish line of, you know, now I am one with everything. I may not feel one with everything. Um, but if I can, if, if, if I can, um, if I can keep my defense mechanisms uh, uh, from, if I can hold them back for just a couple seconds, reality opens up in a very interesting way. And you actually find out that, uh, no, we, we are still the strongest thing. They cannot blow the house down. <laughs> you know I mean? And so, um, you know, I, I'll definitely, I, I would I, I highly uh, recommend people deal, deal with some kind of, whatever internal cultivation, anything that, that, that helps you be kinder to yourself, really, and, and, and kinder to other people. And then, and then of, of course, to, you know, being a, a, a poet, um, art is, the, is, is one of the greatest ways and one of the most straightforward ways to learn how your mind works outside of hegemony, outside of these prescribed, these, 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 these positions and personalities actually that the bourgeoisie is just prescribing you, right? Outside of these comfort zones that are actually just conducive to your domination, right? It's through art that we actually get to see how, what our mind really has to say and how our mind actually wants to communicate and we, and, 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 and rests us on this, you know, on, on the natural shapes of the universe that we are actually, that our consciousness actually um, ex expresses. But in, uh, to, to, to wrap up, I, I, I would emphasize again, though, that the, 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 a, a good way to kind of, uh, uh, to arrive at synthesis, you know, where you can have a groovy, like, this is a revolutionary poem of a very specific, you know what I mean, purpose in this very specific moment actually comes from doing right by the basic food groups, right? That you wanna, you, you know, that you wanna have a practice in, a full immersion in, and make collective every chance you get, right? Yeah, I definitely underline each of those things, the meditation, the political education, the the practice of the practice of poetry for me, the daily practice of poetry to read it, to remember and to um, to actually be able to explore what is possible here. Um, there's something about that that mo moving into navigation of, of systems that are all about teaching me that it's not possible for me to exist as who I am. That creativity is a is a space to continue to explore and witness that those possibilities that I've so deeply forgotten I'm shocking myself, you know, like that that's that's happening constantly. And I would also say 
well, I guess just an, another example of, of that practicing collectivity, of the creating edu educational space beyond. I mean, this is where Raina, Raina came to my living room because like my living room became a school. You know, my living room became a, a school where it's like, we're gonna learn about these revolutionary black feminists. And this is what, and we're gonna be, it wasn't quite a circle because it was a duplex and it was more like an oval because of the shape of my living room. But, um, but it was babies there, it was grandparents there, everybody in between was there. And we were all, we all had a way to access what Audre Lorde was talking about. And we accessed it better because we were with each other. Um, not just because of the facts that everybody knew, but just because when you, when you understand that you're sitting among multiple generations, there's something that's activated that moves beyond what, what capitalism tells us about our one lifetime and how it's so small, we got to preserve it. The expansiveness of who we are that's always there becomes impossible to ignore when you really are seeing people who have lived before you and who you know and, and hope will live after you. So I would say that, I would, I would say that is um, always possible. So for people who are teaching and want to want to be liberated in, in their teaching, it's like, what are the, and I, I see the teachers that I know do this, including some teachers who are on, who are on this call, who, who are in my community. What's the practice of, of teaching differently? What's the practice of, of learning in a, di in a different space in the space that you're told is one you supposed, you're supposed to be in? I think that that's, that's really important, but I do think that those core practices of what is it, what does it take for me to be present? Because I feel like that that starts for me early in the morning, and I'm meditating, and then I'm writing, and then I'm reading these sacred texts by by these elders and ancestors, and it's it's true in the moment when I'm in I'm encountering you. And we're encountering each other in this like, in this genocidal structure. But those few seconds that Tongo's talking about, like that breath of remembering that you are always more important than this structure. You will always be more important to me than whatever the structure is telling me that quote unquote self-preservation is that's enough that's enough for that to be for that to get in there first then that that can shape what's what's possible between us that can shape our interaction and every morning i gotta do it again you know it's not like it's like well <laughs> now i wrote the poem that means i'll never be <laughs> you know never be in a scarce self-preservationist you know unaccountable mode ever again I wish, I mean, maybe that poem, maybe one day I will write that poem, but it hasn't happened any of these many, many hundreds of thousands of days I've been writing these poems. So I think that it, it is practice and it is, it is daily and, and it is changed and shaped by what does actually happen in those encounters with each other. Yeah, including this one, underlining that, including this one. All right, we have one more question from those gathered and then I will uh, hold space for you all to, to share your go and tell the world words, <laughs> your um, messages that you really want us to walk with. Um, so the, the question that we have from Brandon is um, uh, speaking to their experience of starting a degree program in elementary education, the question being, how would you recommend approaching the curriculum of education? Um, Brandon says that they haven't even started yet, but even just flipping through the child development textbook is raising red flags in the way that it's method um, methodically and factually structured. So again, how would you recommend approaching the curriculum of education? And my interpretation of that would also be in the space of like, and this is how you teach. Um, so those red flags. I, I mean, I would just say it's, you, you see it. 
you know, Brenda, you see it already. You're flipping through the thing and you're like, this is not, this whole thing don't, don't love me. And, and it's, it's not, it's not about um, what you came to do, right? You're seeing that Tango was saying that the contradiction is obvious to you in, in that particular moment. I think that, mm, okay, because school is a story, because school is a performance, what it is that you're doing, and any anybody who is who's in an educational process to be an educator, what you're doing is, um, I don't know. I feel like it's just an ongoing process of not drinking the Kool Aid, basically. I mean, that that's that's, that's the language that comes to me. I don't know if that translates to everybody, but it's it's a process of understanding that. It's not that you need to become that. It's not that you need to internalize that. It's not that you need to, um, it's not, it doesn't, it's not gonna even take a small fraction of your genius or attention to uh, to notice and, and jump through hoops. If there's some hoops you feel like you don't need to jump through because you're trying to infiltrate the educational, elementary educational system. I don't know what, I don't know your plan, mission and purpose, but I'm just making assumptions because you part of this conversation that was, language in a particular way. So um, yeah, I think that I think that I would underline what Tongo was saying that it is good and it, it, it could be great if you have a cohort of other educators and you all are looking at those contradictions and, and you're pointing out that, that, that that's not who you want to be um, doing that political education and creating something outside of the institution is important because I think sometimes the impulse can be, I have a critique of this and the institution is excited to absorb that critique, right? They're excited for you to spend all your time supposedly making this elementary education program better for, for itself and not spending that time creating the alternative that you see is necessary because you already, before the first day of class have peeped the game, you know, like that, that's, um, What's exciting to me is that you're getting clarity about what those alternatives should be every time you notice the contradiction and the um, inadequacies of what you're of what you're being taught. And so that that's what I would say. I, I would say it's it's a question of your energy and understanding that whatever no shade to whatever school you're at, but I have just haven't been at schools, you know, for, for, for many, many years, they would love, they would love to absorb your critique and not change fundamentally what they're doing. Um, and so I, I'm excited about the possibility that you might be looking for your, for your comrades, you might be looking for your collaborators to create something else, or you might know the people that you're already in community with who you would want to create that alternative with. And I, I just, something that came to mind when, when Tango was talking about what it does to create something outside of the system. Th this, is what, this is what Nanny of the Maroons taught us, right? This is what the whole practice of marinage has taught us, that even people who were on the plantation, just the idea and the fact that there were people somewhere else being free, even if they never witnessed it themselves, even if they didn't, weren't able to get there to where the, the folks were, it completely disrupted and changed their behavior on the plantation because it made it clear that the plantation is not the only thing. The plantation is not the planet. The planet is the planet, right? And it, it exists in exists in other forms. And so what's the maroon form that you're being called to create with everything that you're noticing, flipping through this curriculum and understanding that it, it is not, it was not made to hold the purpose that you have for doing this work. No, I'm serious. No, that nothing need to be said after that. <laughs> All right. What are the messages that you want us to walk with? I um, that you want us to to think about how we can live into. Um, as we close our time together. Any inspirations or things, questions for us to consider? I 
I think it's I think it's there. I I love how you how you've been writing it out, Reina. I mean, what is the maroon form? Right? What is you had a you had something that you put earlier about like what is your ancestral calling? You know, I th I think that these are the questions that I would love for people to reflect on or talk about with the people who you're around when you're going to be like, "Oh, I went to this thing." And they'll be like, "What was the thing?" And you don't have to try to repeat whatever we said, but if you can get into a conversation about what's what's the alternative form that you can create or continue working in if, if you already are and what is your ancestral calling and how might that be different from let's say what your job is or what you feel like you're being forced to do like what is what is that calling those are things to think about uh spoiler alert you don't think about them once you know like that it, it, again <laughs> that's that's the everyday practice right you get to think about it again um all it's not one of those ones i thought about it and i'm done no <laughs> it wasn't like bing oh great ancestral call and finish that if you're still alive no you didn't you know you didn't finish figuring that out yet so um but just know i'm here thinking about it every day with you too and i'm just really grateful to be part of this conversation it is it is faith building and energizing to know that this this maroon form exists and that we were able to to access it and be with each other and that each of you who said yes to it i just yeah i just get tingles thinking about what you're doing in your community and i love it and i support it and i'm cheering for it and just hell yeah All right, time to close us out with some inspiring words. I was just, I was just, <laughs> I was just gonna put a much love on that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we, get, and, and, and there's nothing really anything more more to be said. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for gathering. Um, it has been my great pleasure to facilitate, to look at the notes here, to type very fast. <laughs> Um, I'm putting into the chat a lot of links for um, that I have assembled for Alexis, for Tango. I have some at the top. I invite you to save the chat, to engage um, with making us matter through perhaps a Twitter thread later, um, exploring those questions of the maroon form, the ancestral alignment, how to not be absorbed um, when we dissent um, these incredible questions that Tango and Alexis have raised and really thinking about um, uh, the structures that are and the possibilities of what will come. Um, and again, Reina Leon and my delight to be with you all. I, I see the time now to um, Igosa and Gertrude, our founders for Making Us Matter to close us out with celebration and joy. It, yeah, thank you all so much. Um, really much appreciations for giving us your time and giving us your spirits and sharing all of this brilliance um, with the folks that are here, but also us being able to take this to folks that are following us on social. Um, uh, Making This Matter is really an organization that's doing exactly what y'all are talking about, trying to step away from the institution to build our own community um, I, we were talking about Octavia Butler and in Prabhupada Bhagsara to talk about earth seed, right? This idea of creating your own community to survive um, that's rooted in love and taking care of one another. And that's really what we're doing with Make It As Matter in our focus on Black educators and our focus on humanizing Blackness through our curriculum. Um, and this work and what y'all are talking about is gonna to continue to feed what we're doing. And we really appreciate um, y'all giving us this time today. So thank y'all very much. Um, we'll put Making This Matter, www.com, makingthismatter.com. Definitely check us out. We have a donation link as well. If you could um, go to that, click those um, to support our work, that'd be really appreciated. And um, Gertrude, any final words? Um, no, just thank you again uh, for this space. Um, I know there are questions in the chat. People just wondering, like, where do they fit in with this work? Or how do they uh, practice, do liberatory practices in education? Um, if you're looking for a space to be, if you're looking for a space to collaborate, please reach out to us. 
Um, this is work only happens in community. It only happens in partnership. Um, so if you're still on this journey trying to figure out exactly where you fit, um, hearts, arms, open, um, please join us. Thank you all so much. Can you see the pride in the panther as he glows in splendor and grace? Toppling obstacles placed in the way of the progression of his race.